With Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2 just around the corner, I thought that the perfect way to look forward to what's on the horizon would be to instead turn around 180 degrees and look at all the Nasby junk we've scattered along the way. Nasby has no shortage of video content describing how it was a failure, or a bad game, or sucks. Basically anything a Smash Ultimate 1 tour at your local tourney would say about Nasby exists in some failure of Nasby video on a channel that at one point or another has also made a Sonic redesign video and gave him PM fare. But at the same time, there does exist more positive videos made by members of the NASB community showing the opposite side of the coin. This one in particular going on to show that the narrative that NASB was a failure is a pretty big misconception, an idea that I full-heartedly agree with, and it's easily proven right when you look at the fact that there's literally a sequel coming out pretty soon. That said, in my research, I found little to no videos that look back at Nasby in a more neutral light. Every video is either heavy-handed Smashy Bros pander or a video that just says, Nuh-uh, made by the truest of Nasby sweepers. This is where I come in, because as someone who's played the game at launch, ran a tournament for it, won tournaments for it, but eventually packed my toys and moved on into other games, I think I can provide a more honest look into the Nasby lens. There was something fierce in the air leading up to the launch of Nick Brawl. Leaks, speculation, the whole caboose. While at launch, the game was largely divisive to players, the pre-launch hype train felt more optimistic. The Smash Riders and Smash Killer False Prophets were definitely there, but overall it was mostly unfiltered hype upon announcement. Characters and announcements about the game were met with positive reception, notably the Wave Dash reveal. All this positivity led to a rising expectation for what Nasby needed to deliver. And did Nasby deliver? To the majority of people, no. A lot of valid criticism was thrown at this game at launch. It felt undercooked, because it was, with the lack of balance, polish, and systems to keep the game entertaining and fun. A lot of the cast felt samey and uninspired for what was a roster that had years of material to draw from. It felt weird how a mascot dinosaur, a talking sponge, and a goth child have this functionally same down air on top of the fact that their up air is practically a vertically flipped version of their down air. And this lack of individuality was even further pushed by the lack of voice acting. This problem in particular has been mentioned by like everyone ever, and reasonably so. This problem of sameness was yet again soured by the fact that the optimal way to play the game ended up being to repeat the same move over and over whether that be the constant up bears, the dares off stage, or the tournament winning Ang Nair. All of this combined created what felt like a very boring game to watch to people. Now, moving from a spectator to that of a gamer, I think this is where quality can get a bit mixed. While all the abovely stated things can be a hindrance to those who watch, the simplicity actually made it fun in my opinion. The game's pace was viciously fast and gave the players a lot of tools to utilize said speed. For someone who at the time was only smash pilled to have been given all of these tempo changing tools that were easily accessible was mind boggling. And the simplicity of the cast led to a really easy game to play if you could get a feel for the engine. The day of launch, there was actually a local hosting the game, and after a day of training at my campus, I went to the tournament and died to Oblina, Nair, and Dare for fourth. Most of the entrants in the local left a little frustrated at the game, and I was one of those people. But I channeled that disappointment into my training, and I spent every day in training mode, learning Reptar combos, how to ledge dash, waveling on platform, the whole shaboodle. As someone who had previously only played Brawl, Flash 2, and ultimate, I had a lot to learn on the movement side of things, and I felt understanding the niche movement was what I needed to scrub kill everyone else with Reptar. A week had passed, and I walked in nervous if I had what it takes. The bracket was slightly larger than the last time, due to a carpool from another region, but the moment I began playing, I noticed just how much I had improved. It felt like everyone else was playing with training wheels while I had ditched them long ago. 
and was racing right towards my opponent with the intent to kill like a Ford 1F50 blatantly ignoring the red light and the grandma trying to cross the other side. I won the darn thing and met someone who'd eventually become my best friend in the process. This first-hand experience is why I think the game can actually be fun if you sit down and learn it. But anyways, while I was high off the NASB fumes, the already small amount of people giving this game a shot competitively continued to just grow smaller. Nick Brawl didn't really hold on to people, aside from the ones that were winning, and eventually the winners left too. It felt like NASB was only appealing to hardcore fans, and that it was difficult for people to want to play the game with its issues when the game holding brackets directly right next to it had more content, polish, and balance. Only a few weeks in, Nasby dropped to single digits at my local, until eventually the locals were getting only one entrant. I remember my friend looking at me and saying, Nasby's dead bro, and I couldn't really do anything but agree with him. The competitive scene as a whole went down a similar path. There were some huge sponsored tournaments for Nasby at the start, sponsored by the devs, you know, which is something that Nintendo hasn't done ever, and when they would try to a year later, um, something else came up. Post-launch, Nasby's in-person presence diminished greatly after that launch honeymoon. In-person tournaments basically became something that was a sign of an at majors every once in a while. During this launch honeymoon, the game gave us two new free characters. In December, we got Garfield, and in February of the next year, we got the Shredder. These two had a lot of stuff in the file suggesting that they were intended to be in the game at launch, but were cut for time. So having them come out for free later was a nice treat for those who hung on to the game. These guys did bring some people back to the game, but didn't bring much more life into it for more than a fleeting moment or a nine minute gameplay video from your favorite content creator. So all that said, was Nasby a dead game? No. In person, Nasby had pretty much faded from existence, aside from tournaments big enough for the buzz to enter. But online, there was still tournaments happening all of the time, most of them leading back to a single Discord server, the Nick Brawl Grinders, a server that had been around from the start of the game that consisted of all the Nasby lovers in the world convening to hold hands and hold brackets. It's hard for me to say that the game is dead when there's a Discord server full of people that I swear to Bob have a VC going all the darn time. So when my local died a slow and painful death, did I seek refuge in the Nasby Grinder Discord? No, I kind of packed up my toys and went elsewhere, only occasionally interacting with them. But as I moved on to greener and furrier fields, whenever someone would mention Nasby being dead to me, I'd start hearing a whistling in my head as I get nasally say, well actually, and point out the post-launch support and active online community. After said action, people's opinion typically didn't change too much. But speaking of post-launch support, a bit of time after the release of Shredder, a follow-up DLC pack was announced in May, containing Ginny from My Life as a Teenage Robot, Hugh Neutron from Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius, and Rocco from Rocco's Modern Life. With videos covering the announcement getting millions of views total together, it was clear that there was still interest in bringing new things to Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. So did the DLC pack revive Nasby to his former glory? No, it, it continued to just be a smaller online community. So looking back at Nasby, calling it any one thing is kind of a difficult task. It'd be easy to just label it as a dead game. But when there's an active community, post-launch support, and literally a new game coming out in a matter of weeks, days, it might already be out by the time you're watching this or the time I release this, who even knows at this point? I don't think it's a dead game in that situation. I think people who claim that are just kind of being haters, to be honest. So that means that Nasby is an underrated gem, right? No. I lean towards it being underrated, but not the amount of underrated that is nearly enough for me to actually consider it underrated, if that makes sense. Like, I'm just like, no, guys, it's not as bad as you say it is. It's slightly better, I swear. But one last thing I want to look at before putting Nasby to rest so it can visit the great numbered sequel in the sky is that Nasby had an enormous impact on the plat fighter genre and me as a person. Nasby was kind of the birth of a new mindset on plat fighters 
Like, yeah, there were some great games before it, such as Rivals of Aether and Rahala, but leading up to this game, there was a sentiment of a game rivaling Smash Bros, a sentiment which was wildly blown out of proportion into the Smash Killer moniker we've all heard of and dread today. While overall, this term only harmed Nasby into becoming a sort of, like, joke, the fact that the term even existed showed that the genre is starting to grow past its Smash dominance. While Nasby could never kill Smash, it opened gates to games and experiences that could lead the path forward into a renaissance that might be upon us shortly with the upcoming Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2, Rivals of Aether 2, and the relaunch of Multiverses. Nick was falsely touted as the platfinder genre's savior, and when presented before a jury, the people heckled and made fun of it, giving Nasby its missed potential as its cross to bear, parading it around the town and hanging its failure for all to see. In a cosmic sort of way, Nick Brawl died for our sins, so we can have the eternal salvation of... Um, uh, multiverses? <coughs> Let me talk to ya. Originally, the video was supposed to end here, at a joke made at the expense of multiverses, but then something happened. The thing in highlighted marker to make me add this part after everything before it was already done in the project timeline was the fact that I played a ton more of Nick Brawl with friends since then. And I just wanted to take a moment to say some more stuff about it. One, playing this final build of the game, like the final balance patch, is like super fun. And a lot of the complaints from earlier on in the meta aren't as problematic or even exist now. So as someone who threw, you know, more or less 12 hours into this game in the span of a week, I want to say that I really appreciate what Nasby is now, because there's not a single other platformer that quite matches its stride. And with Nasby 2 showing a shift into a more stereotypical gameplay loop for the genre, even if Nick Brawl 2 is the best thing ever, Nasby 1's unique traits such as the rock paper scissor system or the shield state are going to make it stand out as its own individual and distinct game, and not just a less preferred version of the game before it, like the sentiment that a lot of people hold towards Smash Brawl compared to Wii U, and then Wii U to Smash Alt. Another thing, if you're someone who hasn't given the game a shot, please, I encourage you to do so. Paying 20 to 40 smackers isn't the easiest commitment in the world for this video game, I'm not going to say that that's the price range that I'm like, everybody should do it, but a Steam key on G2A for less than two bucks is like borderline a steal. So if my message in this video is anything, it's that Nick was far from a failure, and if you find yourself spouting or spewing hate, try to take a step back and see if what you're saying is criticism or harboring hate towards a project because it's something that you're not fully familiar with. Because it's important for the growth of the platfighter genre in the industry as a whole to be constructively critical, but when you try to weaponize those feelings, to not criticize but demonetize competition, it's like all we are doing is cannibalizing ourselves to the point where the only thing we'll have left is a billion dollar company that can't do one nice thing for us. Peace and love, Isor signing out. Let me be